Hello and welcome on my channel Wolf Aqua, your channel about horticulture, aquaponics and aquaculture. And in this video I'm going to show you several types of biofilters with their pros and cons. And let's go! The main function of a biofilter in aquaculture or an aquaponics system is to do part of the nitrogen cycle or more specifically to do the nitrification, so to turn ammonium to nitrate into nitrate. I already made a video about the nitrogen cycle, I put it for you here up in the info chart. Basically, all surfaces where bacteria can grow on can serve as a biofilter material. In a biofilter, we are supplying a lot of surface area for the bacteria and microorganisms to grow on. And after a couple of weeks or a month, you can see with your bare eye actually kind of a brown slime on your biofilter material, and that is called biofilm. And this biofilm consists of a very diverse group of microorganisms and bacteria. During the last years, a few biofilter types were dominantly used in aquaculture and in aquaponics systems. These biofilters do more than just only the biological filtration of the water, which I'm going to explain you in a moment. These biofilters are classified in two sides. This is on one side the static biofilters, and on the other side the moving biofilters. First, I would like to give you two examples for the static biofilters. The first one is actually the trickling biofilter, and the second one is a submerged fixed bed biofilter that gets aerated from the bottom. In the trickling filter, the water gets pumped up and then is dispersed over a biofilter material and then trickles all the way down back to the sampling or directly to the fish. As biofilter material for trickling filters, many times those plastic blocks are used and stacked on top of each other to form kind of a trickling tower. And these trickling towers can be several meters high. I personally have seen in aquaculture systems trickling filters of 5 meters and sometimes even a little bit higher. And that brings me to the weak point of a trickling filter because you have to pump up the water quite high and that can be energy intense. On the other side, a tricking filter also has strong points. For example, you can always ensure that you have enough oxygen for your bacteria to do the nitrification, because not all the media is permanently covered from the water. Furthermore, tricking filters allow a great gas exchange, so the gas exchange between the water body and the surrounding atmosphere. Here, carbon dioxide is removed and oxygen is introduced. And that is a very good thing, and because of that, Many times those tricking filters are ventilated to even enhance this effect. Now we are coming to the second type of biofilter, the submerged fixed bed biofilter that is usually aerated from the bottom. Here, also many times as biofilter media, they use the same kind of plastic blocks that they also use in the tricking filters and they stack them up together. But in this case, of course, they are submerged under the water and to ensure that there's always enough oxygen, these blocks are aerated from the bottom. And that also allows a certain amount of gas exchange. However, Tricking filter and the point of gas exchange are stronger. But it can also be that those filters are not aerated at all, but then many times they use a slightly different media, because research has shown that actually these filters have a very great capacity of filtering very fine particles out of the water. And then you don't want to aerate these biofilters because you want to prevent turbulences that are stirring up the fine particles from the media. Nevertheless, those submerged biofilters need to get flushed back every now and then to prevent anaerobic zones. So, zones without oxygen. Anaerobic zones can appear inside the biofilm, especially when the biofilm is getting too thick, because then all the diffusing oxygen is already consumed from the bacteria in the outer layer of the biofilm, and then anaerobic zones appear. This is unlikely to happen in the next biofilter tip I want to show you, and that is the so-called moving bed biofilm reactor, or in short, MBBR. Here, a carrier material is heavily aerated from the bottom and always kept in suspension. For this type of biofilter, an abundance of carrier materials are available. And soon I'm going to make a video about all the different biofilter medias I tried during the last 10 years. If you don't want to miss it out, I would be very happy if you subscribe, like and ring the bell for my channel. But now back to the moving bed biofilm reactor. One of the advantages of such a biofilter is that it has almost no maintenance. Furthermore, the biofilter material is always rubbing on each other and that prevents a thickening of the biofilm. Studies have indicated that a young, always renewing biofilm has the best capacity for the nitrification. One of the weak points of such a moving bed biofilter is that only 50% of the volume can be utilized for the carrier material because the rest of the volume is needed to keep the whole media always in suspension. However, this weak point is partially compensated by the carrier materials because some of those have a really, really large surface area per cubic meter. Here, the surface area is usually divided in an outer, unprotected surface area and an inner, protected surface area. Through the strong aeration, the inner protected surface area is also prevented to get too thick with the biofilm because all the air bubbles always go through the biofilter media and that is also then stripping out too thick biofilms. Furthermore, the aeration transfers warmth into the water and depending on your location and your fish species, that can be either a problem or a benefit. Another important point to consider with an MBBR is that your biofilter reactor is very escape 
safe. So many times I've seen systems using an MBBR and then after a while you find this carrier materials all around floating in your system and you definitely want to prevent that. In recirculation aquaculture systems you will find all three types of those biofilters. However, more and more moving red biofilm reactors are installed. On a conference that I visited in 2019 in Berlin about recirculation aquaculture systems, they called actually the submerged fixed bed biofilters old school and the moving bed biofilm reactors as new school. But there are many more types of biofilters available. For example, rotating biofilters where actually the microorganisms grow on kind of a disc and this disc is then aligned on a big X and this X is constantly turning around in the water. And by doing so, you always ensure that you have enough oxygen on the surface and you have always enough substrate, so stuff for the bacteria to grow on in the water. And by rotating that, you also can reach pretty good performance of those types of biofilters. Another common type biofilter that is used is the so-called bead filter. Here the water is pushed through a dense package of biofilter materials and not only the nitrification is happening during this process but also fine particle and solid removal. As you can see biofilters can have more functions than just the nitrification. So to put it in a nutshell they can also do the following things. They can also strip out the carbon dioxide from the fish, they can introduce oxygen, they can hold back very fine particles and of course on top of that they do the nitrification. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and you could learn something from it. If you have any questions or feedback, just post in the comment section below the video. I would be very happy if you subscribe, like and ring the bell for my channel. And then I hope to see you for the next video. And ciao!